welcome back. Uh, today I'm starting a series on songwriting lessons. And what I'm going to do is take some of my songs, break them down, explain kind of how I wrote them, chord structures, those type of things uh, with the lyrics to give you an insight on how to write your own songs. It's, it's, it's tough. You look up online how to write a song. And there's a lot of tips and stuff, but not... It, it's, it is difficult to explain to someone how to write a song. It's something that just kind of comes out. But I'm going to kind of break down how I write songs. Maybe that'll give you a little inspiration, some ideas for your own stuff. All right, so today uh, we're going to do, we're going to work on a song called Falls Lake. It's one of the first ones I wrote. Uh, it's one of my, it's probably my favorite song to play. Um, and I'm going to kind of break down how I wrote this song, how the lyrics came about, how the progressions came about, kind of show you how they're played, and uh, give you a little in, insight to how, how I write, okay? So you don't need a lot of knowledge. Uh, having some theory knowledge is good chord structures, what chords are in what key, that, that helps a lot when you're writing, because uh, then you can eliminate some of the chords, but there's always exceptions to those rules, uh, some scale theory, pentatonic, major, minor, those are all handy, but of course not required, all right, um, and uh, for me, typically when I write, it's tough to write, I have notebooks over there full of lyrics, but I have trouble writing the lyrics first, and then putting music to it, for, it just always seems forced for me, so I typically write getting a piece of music and then putting the lyrics afterwards. Um, yeah, when I, if I write the lyrics first and the music, it just doesn't, they don't mesh. Whereas if I can do the music, put the lyrics over, you know, everything just kind of fits then. Um, and I think Kurt Cobain once said that, uh, you know, the lyrics are the last thing he always wrote. And a lot of times they were nonsensical. They didn't mean anything. Uh, they just were last minute thrown in there and they fit the melody. So it sometimes doesn't, it depends on what you're trying to convey. His was a lot of, for me, the music connected more to me than the lyrics did. Uh, I didn't even know he was singing half the time. So it, it just depends on what you're trying to convey. All right, so let's get started here. Um, Falls Lake, it's in the key of E minor. But when I refer to the chords in their numbers, like a one, five, six, four, I typically, well, not typically, I always refer to them in their major key. So this is technically a key of G. It's E minor is the relative minor of G major. So all the chords in G major, G, A minor, B minor, C major, D major, E minor, and you would have like an F, an F uh, sharp diminished and then back to G. Those are all the same chords in E minor. They're, they're exactly the same. It's just what you focus around to give it that happy feel or that sad feel, okay? So it's an E minor, but key of G. And uh, so one day I was sitting around trying to write a song. I was in my band, uh, Scatter Shield, and trying to write stuff for the band. And I come across, I was playing around with just a E minor progression. So it would be a minor six, a one, which is G, a five chord, which is a D, and then a four is a C. So it's... I liked how they kind of fit together and then you just it resolves back nice to that minor from that C uh, so started playing around with a, with a strumming pattern took a little while to find what I wanted but it was it's basically a that kind of feeling so it was a go with it from there and I went back it just felt nice to go back to that resolve and I kind of pummeled around with it. I remember for a little while 20-30 minutes and then I ended up going to a kind of a wagon wheel ask back to the E and I, it wasn't quite working so we were playing around with it uh, in practice one day and somehow we fell upon kind of doing a little turnaround with a quick GD, which I'll show you. So that first part was That's how we turned it around and brought it back and resolved it. That. And 
and uh, there's some things I do when I'm playing it that embellish on it and add to it. Like uh, I do a lot of, I like to pull up and catch those, that high E, just bringing that E note in more. And you're catching the B as well, which is in that E minor. And then I'm, I'm doing it again on the G chord, so I'm hitting that G note. It's just kind of like highlighting the note there. I'm an E minor. Chord highlighting the E, G, highlighting that high G, and then the D. And that's actually uh, highlighting the F sharp on that D, which is its third, major third to the C. And I always, uh, when I play that, I little finger on it and hit that G again, which is the fifth of the C chord. So I'm I'm accentuating notes that are in each chord, uh, just by kind of hit that little high E. So, all right, and that's the verse. That, that's how I did it. It's uh, six, one, five, four, basically. Uh, for the chorus progression. Um, I kind of get away from home base and I go to the four chord that back to the six and then I go further away if you understand how uh, tonic subtonic and dominant chords that kind of there are uh, those things I'm drawing a blank right now what they're called I have a lesson on them um, what their purpose is um, how they take you away from home and create tension and bring you back You'll see why that works. I, I'll put a link to that lesson. But uh, for the verse, or chorus, it's a C. E minor, D, back to the C. And I do that turnaround. Okay, and that's what I'm doing there. And that, that C. I'm not hitting the G on that this time. I'm hitting just the open E to accentuate the uh, the third of that chord. But I do it the second time, so it breaks, makes the C sound a little different. Just changes the feeling of it. But um, and that's the beginning of the chorus, and then the second half of the chorus, the same as the verse. It just turns around, and that's the whole song, just those chords. And musically, for a solo, when I was writing that, I went off of uh, uh, pentatonic. I was using the pentatonic scale, but I do throw uh, the major seven note in there, that F sharp. But it sounds like this first. I'll kind of explain it after. I'm in the jam band and we just jam it. So what that is is I'm just doing that position of the pentatonic. Playing around with that the, on the uh, D and the G string. The 7th and ninth frets. And that, was that note right there that I rest on is nice because over the E minor you're off fifth note of that E minor chord is a B and then when you hit the G if you're still there it's the third of the G so it's it's a nice note it's the your fifth of your E minor and your major third of your G another rest of the note is the G which is the third of the E minor and the root of the G, so it fits nice over both those chords. And that note right there is an F sharp, which is not in the pentatonic. I borrowed that from the uh, natural minor or the natural minor of the E or the uh, major scale. It's all relative, um, but it would be the, uh, the seventh note of the G major 
and then it resolves into that G. And at the end of that, I'm actually playing it. It's kind of hopping back and forth when it hits that note. All right. So it resolves nicely. You're, it takes you back home. I don't want to get too much into theory for this. Just kind of explain how I how I write a great music. So. And now when I'm writing this, just so you know, I'm not mathematically sitting down analyzing the notes and figuring out what's the best note. I'm I'll play the progression. I'll loop it usually through. I have a boss looper pedal, and as it's playing through, I'll kind of noodle around and I feel it and I find something that feels good. Later on, I'll go back and analyze, and I'm like, oh, that's why that worked. So it's not like I'm sitting down with some sort of degree in theory and figuring out the perfect notes. I'm, I'm just feeling it and, like, you know, trying to, trying to find it, and then I'll find something that feels nice. That's typically how I write them. I don't break it down and figure out the notes. Uh, I'm just kind of explaining it to you to help you understand how they, why it works. All right, and then for the lyrics of the song... Uh, when I was strumming it, I was listening to it, and it just kind of had like a southerny kind of nighttime, darker feel. And I was thinking back to when I used to uh, hang out with friends at Falls Lake uh, off a of New Light Road, and just between Creedmoor and Raleigh when you're heading up back way. Um, we'd hang out there. We called it the Hippie Hole. We'd sit there, drink. A guy named Milo would play his guitar. Uh, there'd be a few of us swimming in the water, hanging out by a fire on the beach, drinking, uh, girls dancing, you know, smoking a little bit. And uh, it was, you know, it was the 90s, it was the 90s, I think it was summer of 97, 8, 98, yeah, it was 98. It was good times. And uh, 97 and 98, a couple years we hung out there. But, so this song came out of that experience. And uh, how I started off, it was, the lyrics were, have a seat on the sandbank by the fire there at Falls Lake, grab a drink and drown your cares away. So I rhyme the first two lines and that third one doesn't rhyme. And then I do the same thing again. I'll rhyme the first two lines, southern pines and catfish, shooting star on a bad wish, sun sets on a new light, end of the day. So that, that third line of that part rhymes with the third line from the first part. So you got bank and lake, and then cares away doesn't rhyme. Then you have catfish and wish, and then end of the day rhymes with that first part. So it ties it all together. Uh, and it's just about sitting on the sandbank. There's a fire there. Uh, southern pines, a lot of pine trees around. Catfish, people fishing, you're drinking. Shoot, it's on a bad wish. was just kind of one of those lines that just came out of nowhere, you know. Maybe wishful thinking about, you know, hooking up with, with a certain person you knew you probably shouldn't and stuff like that. Uh, and then sunsets on new light, end of the day. Uh, it's one of my proudest lines. It sounds really like creative and the sun setting on a new day. And all it really is is the road, the bridge that we hung out kind of under was called New Light Road. And the sun would set over that. So you'd see the sun setting over the New Light Road. So sunsets on a new light, end of the day. It was just a sunset over the road. Nothing uh, divine or anything. It just sounded cool. All right. Uh, the pre chorus, when I'm at that sea, uh, it's all at once it starts to pour. The fire dies, it burns no more. Shut your eyes and feel that cold, wet rain. And uh, one night I was out there, just me and a couple friends, a couple girls, and we're having a bonfire. It starts to pour, and fire gets put out, and everyone's running for the car. It was just, that's where that line came from. Uh, it sounds more uh, symbolic than it is, taking some of the magic away here. Uh, and then the second part of that chorus is on the shore of Falls Lake, fires burn as the waves break. I see her dance in the moonlight fading to gray. It's just reference to a girl dancing on the beach in the in the fire. So not in the fire, but in the shadows of the fire. And that's pretty much it. Um, second verse is the same length as the first. A lot of times my second verse is shorter. Um, and all that was was every night going out there, smell the scent of her dark hair. So I rhymed the first two lines. I catch a glimpse of a young face turning away. Barking dogs and the black flies. See the smoke in the night sky. An old guitar sounding out of tune starting to play. Just reference to Milo playing his guitar. Dogs in the distance. Smoke from the fire. You know, it's just nighttime fire by the lake kind of song. Uh, and that's it. And then it repeats the chorus. It has the solo in it, which is the bridge, you know. Um, and I'm just soloing over the verse. A lot of times, I don't know if it's laziness or... 
lack of creativity sometimes, but the majority of my songs, the solos are over the verse. Uh, there's a couple where they're over a chorus progression and only maybe two or three that actually have their own progression for the uh, solo. I just like to keep it similar for the listener. They've heard the verse, they've heard the that sound and it, it keeps it home for their ear. You know, if I want to build tension and build something epic, then the progression changes each time. But typically that's how I write. I'll do a verse, chorus, verse, chorus. A lot of times the second verse is like maybe half if the first one's really long. Uh, a bridge, which could be um, a musical breakdown, a solo, a whole different set of lyrics. Uh, and then a chorus, sometimes the chorus is twice. As Dave Grohl said, right in the hits, you know, songs are chorus, verse, chorus, 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 bridge, chorus, chorus. A lot of choruses. It just catches the listener's ears. So uh, that's how I wrote Falls Lake. It was just sitting around strumming, picked out a couple progressions, put them together, and then just started putting lyrics over that fit that and the feeling I was going for for the sound of the song. All right. So thanks for watching. I hope this helps a little bit. I'll do a few more of these. Any questions, comments, suggestions, put them in the box and I'll be sure to write back. Thanks. Mm -hmm.